Happy Thursday, Andrews University. We are glad today to welcome back for the second time uh, Devon Franklin. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Devon currently serves as the senior uh, vice president for production at Columbia TriStar Pictures, which is a division of uh, Sony Entertainment. And he was recently named as one of the top 35 executives under 35. So that would make him young. And uh, one of the youngest in the industry, actually, uh, in that position. Uh, when Devon spoke to us back in 2011, he flew in from Detroit on a puddle jumper. He was over there on the set of uh, a remake of Sparkle, which was uh, one of the last, uh, what well, was the last screen role uh, for the late Whitney Houston. Uh, Devon is also, uh, De Devon has also uh, had a very successful remake of the movie Karate Kid, starring Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith. He's worked on numerous other films, including The Pursuit of Happiness and Hancock, uh, both starring Will Smith, as well as the uh, faith-based hit Not Easily Broken and the family comedy Jumping the Broom, uh, which both were produced by Bishop T.D. Jakes. So anyways, that's just his day job, okay? His other calling is to be a preacher. He's an Adventist preacher, a motivational speaker, and he has been the author of a book that just came out uh, not long after you were with us uh, called Produced by Faith. And this is a guide about how to pursue your career without compromising your faith. And this is written now by a man who has pursued his career in Hollywood. Uh, no longer the single man he once was. Uh, <laughs> not long after leaving us, he married uh, Megan Good, who is an actress and a philanthropist. And they now make their home in Los Angeles, California. And Devon, thank you for flying all the way back to be with us again today. Uh, please come and inspire us. Thank you. Good morning. How we doing? Okay, y'all. Y'all got to do way better than that. All right. Now I, I've on only on a couple hours of sleep. I'm sure, like many of you are, but we are alive. We are here today. We serve a God who loves us, who cares about us. So, how are you doing this morning? Come on now. Come on. Give God a hand praise right now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, please. Listen, I'm here to tell you there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, I can tell you that we serve a God not only who loves us, but is providing for us. And I have seen God do some amazing things. I remember what it was like to be in school, to be in university like, like you all. And I can tell you there were some days uh, when I would have to be, uh, you know, in, in class early and I would be like you. Uh, I would sleep my way through, all right? But I'm here to tell you that God has brought us here because He has a word for us. When I got the call to come back to Andrews, I immediately said, yes, we have to do this. Why? Because I see too many of us, and I say us as Christian brothers and sisters, and I say us as those who are raised in the Adventist faith, I see too many of us living beneath our potential, living a life that we try to portray to others as being authentic and genuine, but the person we really are is trapped up inside, and we don't know how to let that person out because we don't believe we can actually be who God called us to be and still be accepted. Am I talking to anybody this morning right now? And you may not be able to say amen because you're sitting next to somebody that you've portrayed to be something you're not, so it's cool. But I can see the amen in you, so you can just say amen silently, right? You know, that's right, you know what I'm talking about. You know, as, as a young kid growing up in, in the church, growing up in the Adventist faith, I, I can tell you something. Um, it didn't feel like we were Adventists. It felt like we were Camp Venice, okay? Come on, y'all. Can't do this. Can't do that. Can't eat this. Can't. I said, well, please, just tell me what I can do so I can do that, right? And one of the things that was so interesting is that growing up in the church, and this wasn't even exclusive just being Adventist, growing up in the church, you know, as a young kid wanting to go to Hollywood and having dreams of making movies and maybe even making television one day and feeling like maybe that was God's calling on my life, that was taboo. 
People said, no, you can't go into Hollywood. No, you can't be a Christian. No, you can't be from the Adventist faith and go into Hollywood. That is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the devil's playground. As a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and show you, you know, in Patriarchs and Prophets, what Ellen White has to say about it. Right? You can't do it. Get the anointing oil. Cast the demon out this boy. We need to tell him. He needs to go to Oakwood University. He needs to go into ministry. That is your Hollywood divide. You're laughing because some of y'all been heard the same thing. It's cool. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I grew up with a deep appreciation for what I learned in church. I love the Sabbath. I love the opportunity to shut everything down and go to church. I mean, I was very, very involved, you know, directing the youth choir. You know, I would usher, I would deacon, I would clean up the church afterwards. I would lock up the church with the elders. I loved being in church. But I also had a passion for film and a passion for television. And I said, well, how is it those images are able to inspire me, but you guys tell me I can't do it? But then you show me the Word, and you tell me that faith without works is dead, and you tell me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you tell me I'm supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. But if I'm supposed to live by faith, Inherently, you're teaching me that if I go to Hollywood, I'm supposed to live in fear because if I go to Hollywood, you're telling me that my faith will not carry me in that industry. So I had to ask the question, are you teaching me to live in fear because fear works or are you teaching me to live in faith because faith works? And whatever works, tell me how to live that life because that's what I want to do. But there was a schizophrenic education I was getting as a young man because some would say you have to be fearful, but then others would say you have to be faithful. And I had to decide for myself which path I was going to choose. Many of you are at that juncture right now. You've got to decide for yourself which path are you going to choose. And I'm here to tell you at the end of your life, it's going to be you and God, and God's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? And you can't say, well, my mama told me to do this, or my pastor told me to do this, or my brother told me to do this. No, God's going to hold us accountable for what he gave us to do. When I look at the book of Daniel, and I love using Daniel as a wonderful example, in the first chapter, it says that King Nebuchadnezzar had conquered the Jews, and they chose some of the, the most brightest and, and the most educated young men of the Jewish faith to have internships in the kingdom of Babylon. Now there's Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego there in, in Babylon, and they have a dilemma. The dilemma is there's a king's diet, which focuses a lot on meat and wine, that they are supposed to eat like all the other interns in the kingdom. But they know, wait, that's not how we've been called to eat. But they have a dilemma. Can we still do the job we're asked to do, but do it in the way that God called us to do it? Mm, I'm here to talk to somebody this morning. I need you to know that your faith is not an obstacle to what God has called you to do. It is the path to do what God has called you to do. I am so tired of us thinking that, oh, just because I'm Christian, just because I've been it, that means I can't be all God called me to be. Stop living the lie. It is a lie. If God called you to be Adventist, it means he's already allowed your path to be fulfilled, but we have to have enough faith to walk in it. As a young kid growing up, you know, I said, listen, I'm going to go to Hollywood. I'm, I'm going to figure this out because I said, if Daniel can do it in Babylon, why can't I do it in Hollywood? Why? But the question is, will I compromise how I eat to do the job? Or will I have enough faith to eat the way God has called me to eat and still believe he has a path of success lined out for my life? That's why when I first started in entertainment at 18 years old, going in to get an internship in Hollywood working for Will Smith. Anybody ever heard of Will Smith? <laughs> oh, a few of y'all. Okay, a few, a few. Working for Will Smith, I wanted to get my foot in the door at 18 years old. Again, I was very much the same age as many of you all in here. And, and again, I had grown up in the church, and there I was in that internship interview. And we were going, things were going really well. Up until a point, at the very end of the interview, they asked me, Devon, is there anything else you would like me to know? This was the person interviewing me. And at the end of the interview, God said, tell her about the Sabbath. I said, yep, I'll do this once I get the, get the job, Lord. <laughs> you give me the job, I'll tell her all about the Sabbath, not a problem. Come on, you ever been there before? You know, like, no, 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 I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to close the door of opportunity. I want to get in the door. And then now once I'm in, I'll start moving pieces around. 
But God said, tell her about the Sabbath. And there I was, similar to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can I do the job, but eat the way he's called me to eat? Or do I have to compromise my diet of faith in order to sit at the table of success? And God said, tell her. And I said, Lord, you're not right. Why you want me to get up in here and I'm about to, you know, see all these celebrities walking down the hall and I'm about to get this job and you want me to tell her about the Sabbath? You know good and well she's not going to accept me. You know, what do I need to tell him? I can't work for one day of the week. Are you kidding me? I need to be able to tell him I can do everything. But he was like, do you trust me? Do you believe in me? I said, okay, Lord, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you how much I trust in you. Fine. So I told her, I said, you know, there's one thing, one stipulation. Before I get this internship, you know, I, I don't work on the Sabbath. And she said, well, what's the Sabbath? I said, well, Friday night sundown is Saturday night sundown. I don't work. So if you need me to work during this period of time for this internship, unfortunately, I will not be able to take the job. Radio silence. <laughs> I said, Lord, you're not right. You, <laughs> you are really messed up, Lord. And after a moment of silence, she said, don't worry, Devon. We can work around that. I ended up taking the internship at the age of 18, unpaid, never having to work a Sabbath. They liked me so much, they asked me to come back the following semester, and they said, why don't you let go of your work-study job, and we'll begin to pay you. Will I have to work on the Sabbath? Absolutely not. Whatever you're doing, if it causes you to work the way that you work, then we want you to be here, and we want, you to, we want to be able to pay you so you don't have to worry about how you're going to make tuition and make the bills get paid. I need you to know something. When you serve God, He will make a way for you that others may say is impossible. But the key wasn't just applying my faith, it was applying my faith along with applying a work ethic. Now, I got to talk to you guys. Some of y'all are way too lazy. Can I say that? Can I say that? Am I right? Can I say that? Are y'all going to take me off the stage? Some of y'all are too lazy. Some of you sleep way too long. Just because you don't have to go to class doesn't mean you have to sleep till 1 o'clock. Oh, wow, did I say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're sleeping your dreams away, and then you wonder why things aren't happening in life the way you want. Why? Because you are not persistent, and you're not tenacious enough about what's going on in your life that you're letting life happen to you. Let me tell you something. When I got that internship working for Will, my number one goal was to get more opportunity and to ultimately be able to have conversations with people like Will that could help me make my career. But guess what? I'm the intern. Will ain't talking to me. The only way he was ever going to have a conversation with me is if he could see me through my work. So what did that mean? Let me tell you, you think working in Hollywood is glamorous, not glamorous at all. Do you want to tell me, let me tell you what my first job was as an intern? Copying scripts, Starbucks runs, filing. Oh yeah, I had to redo the whole file system, okay? All right, not sexy at all. I'd be back in the kitchen doing the filing, all right? That's how I began my career in entertainment. I would go around and remember the lunch orders. You want this, and you want no cheese on yours, and you want no sour cream on yours, right? I would take the initiative, because if they could see the value of my work, then maybe they would give me the benefit of a conversation. Some of you, you want to be somewhere in life. The way to get where you want to go is to begin to treat the thing that you're in right now like the thing you want it to be. Don't think all of a sudden you're going to get outside of Andrews and become successful if you have not been practicing success here on this campus. You might be taking some classes that you don't like, but do the class you don't like like the class you want it to be, and you're going to see things on this campus open up for you like never before. Hmm. Yeah. You didn't think you were coming today just to get an easy word, did you? No, God sent me here because some of you guys are trapped and you have to be liberated because he's put purpose inside of you. He's put a dream inside of you. He's put a destiny inside of you, and you owe it to him to become everything he created you to be and stop letting excuses run your life. Was I going to let the excuse of being an Adventist and being a Christian, was I going to let that excuse stop me from my destiny? I could have chose a different path, y'all. I could have said, you know what, I'm going to take the path that everybody else wants me to do. But let me tell you one thing. God is the only person that knows how to direct your story. Why? Because He created you. 
He created me. As much as I love my pastor, as much as I love my mom, as much as I love my family, they didn't know what God was doing in my life, so I had to listen to God. But I had to identify, can I do it the way that he's taught me, by keeping my faith and working hard? And as I began to apply the two, I began to see things open up like never before. When you look at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in Babylon, when they began to adhere to their diet, they got favor to do the diet for 10 days. And after 10 days, they were smarter, they were stronger, and they were more efficient than anyone else in the kingdom, so much so that they allowed them to keep eating the way they were eating because their productivity was so high. I need to tell you something. Your productivity can be higher than the person you're working next to, but you have to do it the way God called you to do it. Too many times I see people trying to act like somebody else and get what they got. No, no, stay in your own movie, all right? Stay in your own movie. Stop looking at somebody else trying to be them. No, people want to say, oh, Hollywood has the best actors. No, the best actors might be right here at Andrews University. Uh-huh, I should have bought a whole card of Oscars and passed them all out. Why? Because some of y'all are putting on a really good act. <laughs> we should just go ahead and lay, lay out the red carpet, let you walk down it. Come on now doing a really good act, trying to be like someone else, wearing someone else's wardrobe, wearing someone else's uh, clothes, trying to do someone else's lines. No, you have to do the lines God called you to do. Why? Because it's your story. You're the hero of your own movie, and you have to let God direct you into success the way he's created you to do it. Now, as an intern, I worked for four years and, and, and you know, had a really great time. And then when I graduated, they asked me to come and do a, uh, uh, an assistant job. Now, I got to tell you, being an assistant out of graduation, you know, that, that was not a sexy thing. An assistant is basically someone, you know, who answers, you know, the phone and, and does a thing. And, and I, here's the thing. My, my thought at that point in time was, oh, I don't want to be an assistant. I just want to go from being an intern, graduating USC college, and then getting a job as an executive. I wanted to skip a step. But God said, uh-uh. If you want to produce one day, if you want to be successful one day, it starts right there in that chair. Lord, you want me to answer phones? Yes. You want me to do scheduling? Yes. You want me to keep doing a version of what I was doing as an intern, but now full-time? Yes. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. He says that if you are faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. God said, because my dream was to produce films. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to produce films and television. And God said it begins right there in the assistant chair. And he said, you better not turn your nose up at good, honest work. He said, because that's the work that will lay the foundation of your success. Too many times we think we're above the work. I'm here to tell you, if the work is in front of you and you have hands and you have a mind to do it, you better do the work. You're not above the work. Because in doing the job as an assistant, answering the phones and, and scheduling the meetings, I began to learn how everything works. God has you in a process right now where he's preparing you to lead. And if you miss this step right now, you might miss success overall. So please don't overlook where you are. And let me tell y'all something. Let me just take a, a quick commercial break. I'm going to come right back to my message. Please slow the thing down. You're so rushed. Oh, I can't wait to get out of Andrews. And here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do here, that you are missing the experience of being in this moment. Let me tell you, when you get out of this university, bills are real. Rent is real, okay? Let me tell you something. It's one thing when you have financial aid, but when you get out and you graduate and you ain't got no financial aid, let me tell you, real life is waiting for you. Take time to enjoy the moment. Being here on campus is a wonderful experience. If I had it to do all over again, I would have enjoyed college a lot more. I spent so much of my college years so focused on what I wanted to do when I got out that I didn't really maximize the experience of being there. Please don't make the same mistake that I made. Enjoy the now. Enjoy this experience because God is using it to prepare your character, to prepare your integrity, and to prepare your relationships and your, and your networks of people so that when you're in your career, this experience here will help you be successful there. Slow it down. Enjoy yourself. And I say enjoy relative to, you know, I'm not saying wild out now, okay? Because some of y'all come to college and it's the first time you've been outside your home and you wild out, all right? Now, I'm not saying live in a, you know, go crazy in a sinful way. I'm saying you can still have a lot of fun, but doing it God's way, amen? I need a few more amens on that one. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> so do not overlook a step. So when you look at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in Babylon, here they were. They were proficient. They, and Babylon was known for their rebellion against God. But God placed some of his own in an industry, in a position that was not known for valuing him. Why? Because he still needed his people to be where the, 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 the influence of the world was at that time, which was in Babylon. It is so important that us as Christians not uh, think that we have a barrier to being influential. Wherever God has called you to be, we owe it to ourselves to be there because maybe someone will never know him unless you go. The light can only shine in the darkness. People said, Devon, why do you want to be in Hollywood? I said, well, what if no one even really knows who Jesus is? Maybe me going might help somebody know that there is a Savior who saves and that you can still be everything in Christ and still be very successful. Maybe that's why God needs me to be there. And you know, when you start quoting Scripture back to somebody and they don't agree with you, they just say, mm-hmm, uh-huh, all right, I'm going to come back to you on that point, Devon. Because at the end of the day, all I can do is be who I'm called to be. After getting that assistant job and doing that for two years, I ended up quitting. I quit. Yep, hallelujah. And I, got, I, I quit recently, too. I'm going to tell you all about that. See, I believe you have to walk by faith, not by sight. And I believe that sometimes you have to make yourself really uncomfortable in order to really experience and see where God is. After having been an assistant for almost two years, I was at a dead-end job, you know, there was no opportunity to be promoted at Will's company, and one day I go in, and I'm praying, and, and, and I'm mad at God. Now listen, I was mad at God because I said, Lord, I've been doing all this work as an assistant, I did all this work as an intern, and you have not promoted me yet. Why? And I'll never forget, I talk about it in my book, Produced by Faith. I go into the bathroom stall one morning, and I shut the door as I'm there at work, and I say, Lord, you said anything I asked for in the name of Jesus, you would do. So, Lord, I'm standing on your word right now. You got to move on this job today. I said, Lord, I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do. You got to move on this job today. And I go back, shut the stall door. I go back to my cubicle. Later on that night, my boss calls me into his office. I worked for Will's producing partner. He sits me down. He says, Devon, we love you, but we know you've hit a wall and we want to help you find a new job. Now, I need to translate this for you. As you move and you graduate and you get into working into your profession, if your boss comes to you, and tells you they want to help you find a new job. Okay, that is code for your current job is not going to be yours much longer. It's a slow way of getting fired, all right? And I'm like, well, wait, I'm doing a good job. And like, we know, but we just can't promote you and there's no room for you to go. So we're going to help you. So I walked out of the office. I said, wow, God heard me. My goodness, why? I prayed and he did something. I said, wait a minute, Lord, I should have prayed more specifically because you did something, but now I got to go find a job. <laughs> After months of looking for a job, I got to the place where I said, you know what? If I don't step out on faith, maybe the job will never come. So I went ahead, I put in my two-week notice, and I quit. And they said, Devon, you know, we said we would help you. Do you have a job? Do you know where you're going? I said, I don't know where I'm going. Well, why are you leaving right now? I said, because how can I tell you that faith works if I am afraid to try it? Oh, yeah, and it got real quiet. You know, when somebody, you get real spiritual and someone ain't ready for all that. They're just like, okay, man, just fill out that paperwork, Devon. Just go ahead and fill that thing out. Okay, all right. Within two weeks, I said, Lord, just give me a job in the two weeks so I can show everybody how great you are. If you give me a job in these two weeks, I'll run down the halls and I'll praise your name. It's funny how we tell God what we're going to do when we're going to do it if he would just do something for us. But he says, wait, I woke you up, didn't I? I started you on your way, didn't I? Isn't that enough for you to praise me right now? Do you really need me to do anything more for you? Mm, okay, I'm talking to somebody right now. See, you've been mad at God because you don't feel like he's doing what he called, that he wants you to, you want him to do. So we say, God, why don't you do this for me? And God says, listen, I financed your faith for the day. I woke you up. You have breath in your lungs. Your brain is sending messages all through your body. You don't even think about it. That's me, God, telling you that I am for you and I got you. So stop getting mad at me, God, because I'm not doing something you think I should be doing when I've already done enough for you just right now. So here I am saying, Lord, if you gave me a job, I would praise you like nobody's business. And he said, oh, really? He said, so all you want is a job, huh? I'm not good enough, huh? And it dawned on me, all I've been doing is praying for a job. All I wanted what was, in was what was in God's hand. I was not asking for God's hand. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I no longer want the job. Matter of fact, you can take entertainment. Maybe you want me to do something else. I said, I'm going to take my desire for entertainment and put it on the altar. Give me your hand. 
Give me your will and you can take everything else. And if your will is entertainment, then open the right door. But I'm going to stop praying about a job and I'm going to pray for more of you. And the more that I began to press into him, the more that I began to ask more of him, he began to give me that, so much so that even though I left unemployed with no job from the biggest movie star in the world, on a Friday I left. On a Monday, God had someone call me and offer me an executive position at a production company that I'd always dreamed that I would work at. Long story short, I'm at that production company for about a year and a half. After that, uh, MGM, everybody ever heard of MGM, the studio behind the James Bond movie? Anybody heard of James Bond? 007? All right. Well, they, they still make 007 to this day. And uh, they called me up and they said, Devon, we're looking for an executive. Would you like to come interview? I said, great. I go in and interview. Now, I got to just stop this for one quick moment. I'll come right back to my our regularly scheduled program. See, I went into that interview in jeans and a t-shirt, not intentionally. I just didn't have time to go change. And I said, am I going to go home and, and change and be late to the interview, or am I going to go to the interview and be like I am? Going like I was and allowing my personality to shine through was a key for me getting that job. Why do I share this with you? Because some of you right now are trying to strategize and figure out how to navigate you know, your career and putting out your, the interview and putting out your resumes and going out for jobs. Your number one asset beyond, beyond your experience is your personality. I'm not saying go in and jeans and t-shirt like I did, okay? God, you, God may not have that anointing for you on that particular thing, okay? <laughs> but he does have the anointing of your personality. Please don't go into an interview trying to become what you think the other person wants. Be who you are. Amen. Because your personality is what that organization needs because you being unique is the thing that they don't have. They have 10 other people trying to be what they think they want, but the one person that comes in and is authentically themselves is the one person that's going to stand out and usually will get the job. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. So here's the thing. I, I, I go in for the interview at MGM. I get the job. Six months into being there, guess what? They put the company on selling block, and we're all going to get fired. I said, God, you have a funny sense of humor. <laughs> I was good at my other job. Why are you going to let me go, Lord? And I started praying. At the 11th hour, MGM got sold to Sony Pictures. Sony Pictures is the umbrella company for Columbia Pictures, right? And I said, Lord, give me a job at Sony. Give me a job at Sony started praying. I said, Lord, if it's your will, show me. Open up a way if it's your will, because I believe you opened up a door already for me in entertainment, and I don't believe you want that door to stop at MGM. At the 11th hour, I got a message from the chairman of Sony. She said, Devon, do not look for a job. You have one when the deal closes. I need somebody to get this in your spirit. When you serve God and you do what he's called you to do, he's going to make a way for you that is otherwise impossible. I was the last one hired in my department at MGM. Usually it's the last hired, first fired. But in this case, when you operate with God's rules, God is not subject to the rules of man. So he will put you in position. He said the latter will be greater. So I need you to know you're not going to be the tail, you're going to be the head, but you've got to let God be the first head that you serve and everything else will fall into place. So I get to Sony, the, Columbia, the, the umbrella company for Columbia Pictures. I'm there, you know, making movies like Pursuit of Happiness and, and, and Hancock and, and, and Karate Kid and doing all these great and wonderful things and writing a book and all this stuff. But recently, God said it's time to move. I said, what you talking about, Lord? I'm comfortable. I got a great job. People know me as this executive for Columbia Pictures, man. Lord, I'm going around the world. I got this book called Produced by Faith. You want me to do what? He says, it's time for you to leave. You got to start your own thing. I said, God, but can we talk about this, please? He said, no, it is time for you to start your own thing. Because my original dream from when I was a kid was to produce movies. Now, God took me along a path to prepare me that I had never knew was going to manifest, right? I never had thought I was going to work for a studio. I never thought I was going to make all these movies. I never thought I was going to meet Will Smith. I never thought all these things were going to happen. But God says, I'm going to take you on a path to prepare you to produce. So he said, now's the time. This was about last spring. He said, now's the time. I said, Lord, you want me to do, you want me to, you want me to go into the chairman's office and tell her it's time for me to start my own company? He said, yes. I said, okay, fine. I'm going to see where you are, God. I literally, last April, 
I go into the chairman's office, I sit down with her, and I, she's like, hey, Devon, we want, we want to up your contract. You know, you're doing so great here. And I said, that's nice, but I don't want the contract. I don't want the promotion. I want to actually leave the company. She said, you want to do what? I said, yes, it's time for me to go. She said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to produce films. I want to start my own company. I want to start Franklin Entertainment, and I want you guys to fund it. <laughs> you have not because you ask not. Life or death in the power of the tongue. If the Bible says I can go before the throne of God boldly, why can't I go before man or woman boldly? The worst she could say is no. <laughs> then I know that's not how God's going to do it. But as we're sitting there, guess what she said? She said, yes. Yes, we'll set you up, we'll fund your company, we'll start you in a first look deal as long as you don't negotiate with anybody else. Because we need you here on this lot doing what you do because you're the only person that can do it. We started negotiations, right? Now check this out, check this out. I know our time is short, but check this out. I need you to, oh, God is a God of timing. We started negotiations, right? It took a long time to negotiate the deal. So while we're negotiating, I'm still an executive. By the time the deal closes, Shortly thereafter, the hack hits. Anybody ever heard of the Sony hack where all of our computers got hacked? The hack hit. So for three months, the company is in complete turmoil dealing with this, this hack. Everyone on Sony, uh, the lot, got hacked with their computers and information got out. And it was a big mess that was reported on all around the world. When we came back from the holidays, after the hack was beginning to, you know, mitigate and get control, the chairman ends up stepping down. And they just recently appointed a new chairman. Now, by the time she had stepped down, I had already transitioned into my deal, into my company. Why am I articulating the time? Because if I had waited one second longer, by the time I would have gone in to ask for my company, there would not have been enough time for it to happen because the hack was coming and God knew that she was ultimately going to lose her position. Do you realize that when God calls you to do something, you have to move with urgency. You have to move with determination. Why? Because the door of opportunity he may open may not stay open forever. And I'm here to tell you that right now, when I go onto the lot, because I'm still on the Sony lot, I can walk past the old building where I used to be, and now I have an office that says Franklin Entertainment, where I can make movies that uplift. Now, now here's the thing. It's not about just making, you know, uh, uh, big movies, right, right? It's about making movies that can uplift people in the name of Jesus. People know me. They say, oh, Devon, you're, you're that faith-based guy, aren't you? I say, you can call me what you want, but most importantly, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You can put whatever label on me you want to put on me, but I'm going to do God's business. Well, don't you think that's a limiting thing? Don't you think that's a niche thing? I said, well, the last time I checked, it would be better to be a, a doorman at the kingdom of God, right? than to be a manager anywhere else. I am just so excited that God would use me to do what he needs to do. The Bible says the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached for witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Let me tell you, you got to preach the gospel. How do you preach the gospel? By living. I need anyone in here who can hear and understand what I am saying. If you are living beneath your means, if you are living beneath your potential, if you are trapped inside of this other thing, God called me here today to liberate you, to remind you of who you serve, to let you know that faith works, and you have to have enough faith to get uncomfortable comfortable, to push outside yourself. And let me tell you something, when you begin to live the life God called you to live, you've never experienced peace like that. You've never experienced joy like that. Oh, Andrews, I wish we had more time. But God knew he only needed 35 minutes to do the work that he needed to do in this house today. If we don't get a chance to talk after this, and we never, may never get a chance to talk on this earth, my hope is that because of this conversation here and what God needed to impart, that when we all make it over to the real premiere that matters, Amen. that then we will be able to say, wow, what a journey that was. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. <laughs>